Hi everyone, I want to talk about polysomnography. Thanks for listening to my presentations. Well, if you've heard about polysomnography before, either you're confused, you don't know what it's all about, or you want to know more, okay, you'll get it first down. Let's go. Polysomnography is a diagnostic test for sleep-related breathing disorders. Somnography can be used to diagnose obstructive sleep apnea, central sleep apnea, narcolepsy, periodic limb movements of sleep, or periodic limb movement disorder, and so on. Polysomnography is done in the laboratory with a technician. The patient sleeps for the whole night or some we choose to have what it calls split nights. In other words, they have half down one night and they proceed the other night. Monitoring devices will be connected. I'll go over all of them. Before having polysomnography done, stop the following. It is advisable to stop all medications four weeks before testing. But if you are on such medication for central sleep apnea or obstructive sleep apnea, don't stop them. Okay? And before stopping any medication, discuss with your GP or family physician because not all patients could just stop any medication abruptly like that. The reason why we advise that is some medications will have effects on cardiorespiratory and yeah, and certain number system centers. So they will have a kind of effect or mask you know, what we are about to pick in the life of the affected person undergoing the test. But it's not everyone that could just stop medication abruptly. No cold turkey on a many situation. So when you discuss with your physician, they will guide. With that, let's go. Alcohol before the test should be stopped. Please try that. Caffeine in the afternoon or evening of the test should be canceled. Don't take it. Stop caffeine in the afternoon or evening of the test. Stop alcohol before the test. Portable monitoring would be appropriate if alcohol is a problem in those that are strongly addicted. Continue your usual medications. Just make sure you are under the tutelage of your general practitioner or family physician. They know the medications that will affect this test. You can use your sleep aids if you are on any. To the anxious patients, I don't blame anyone for being anxious when you are going to be secluded to be in one room for a long period of time and sleep in an environment you are not familiar with, you may be anxious. So be time could be given um, for anxious patients or such as apnea but can't sleep in the lab without anxiety. Okay, but the patient must be kept in the lab and if the person is still sedated or under sedative influence, there should be no driving, please, for reasons that are obvious. No? I don't need to waste your time going to that. If the person is still under sedation, no driving. Let me go quickly over the gadgets that they're going to no bring around you. You could be accompanied by your spouse or friend, and you can go with your pillow from the house if you choose to. So they will hook up EKG, electrocardiogram. They will hook up electromyogram. They will hook up electrocularography. They will hook up electroencephalogram. 
polysomnography records, respiratory effort sensor, and peripheral capillary oxygen saturation sensor. So they're going to hook up all this. So what they want to know, they want to know how your heart is working, electrical activities of your heart, your muscles, the uh, your eyes, you know, how it's rotating and everything like that. Then the parts of your brain, you know, how whether there are saline scissors and so on like that. Then of course the pattern of sleep, apnea, hopnea, everything like that, respiration will all be on polysomnography, respiratory efforts, you know, we know about upper ventilation and upper ventilation and central sleep apnea. And then you know, such a sleep apnea that there'll be a level of respiratory effort, but battling with upper airway obstruction. And then what's the level of oxygen? So everything like that. Okay, polysomnography, home sleep apnea testing. The indications could be might be because of obstructive sleep apnea or central sleep apnea. It's going to be full night or split night studies for positive airway pressure therapy. Efficacy or positive airway therapy assessment could be made in that form because it is home sleep apnea testing. And it could be because patient is on oral appliances or post surgery for obstructive sleep apnea. It might be that the individual is having what is called chain stokes breathing or COPD, chronic obstructive pulmonary disease, or hypoventilation. Notional seizures could be picked via the EEG. What are the possible contraindications? Well, no specific contraindications say that don't dumb moribund patients, with all due respect to people that are very, very sick, please don't take them to the polysomnography lab, leave them there and walk away. No, it's not going to be appropriate to leave people with congestive heart failure with left ventricular ejection fraction less than 35, and they are not on treatment. That is not going to be helpful. Besides those situations, there is no specific contraindication. What are the complications while undergoing polysomnography? Really none. Okay, what are the values that we're going to measure, or measured variables? We will get the sleep stages, okay? We're going to get respiratory efforts using your survival manometry. Airflow will be assessed using nasal prompts. Snoring using microphone attached to the neck. That would be pretty nice if you'll be able to hear yourself back again. You know, you'll not be able to tell how loud your snoring is, and some will even deny that they ever snore, but their partners could tell better. This time, you will hear it yourself. And tidal carbon dioxide, that is, or carbon four oxide level will be picked. Transcutaneous partial pressure of carbon dioxide, or carbon four oxide. Oxygen saturation with pulse oximetry. EKG to detect arrhythmia. Do the test in various body positions like supine, then lateral, and prone. And of course, we could predict so easily that it will be worse with supine or prone than lateral position. Limb movements with EMG on tibialis or both legs. Video monitoring of the patient by the technologies from the polysomnography lab. So you are now by yourself alone, somebody is watching. The information we're going to derive will be one, the total time for monitoring. That is from light out to light on. The total sleep time. The light sleep, that is stages N1 and N2. 
the deep sleep at a stage entry, rapid eye movement that is REM sleep, the sleep efficiency, that is the time in bed, sleep latency, arousals, apnea, respiratory effort related to arousals, and chain stokes breathing. We we'll also get information, EKG tracings as per arrhythmias or not. We we'll get information about limb movements, as the hemoglobin saturation, body position, snoring, apnea, apopnea index per hour, respiratory disturbance index. And with that, I've come to the end of this presentation and I could categorically say that if you check my channel, you are going to get full information on insomnia, obstructive sleep apnea, central sleep apnea, snoring, sleep problems in children, positive airway pressure, and now polysomnography. So I could say that I've covered a lot of ground when it comes to sleep disorder. So kindly subscribe to my channel and go over all these different presentations. With that, you should be able to you know, help somebody around you as a health care delivery person, or if you yourself, you are having some of this problem, or your friends or family members or your children, you might be able to help them seek further assistance with your physician. Kindly subscribe to my channel and you'll be able to get these presentations immediately they are published. I appreciate it. But I'm not, I'm not treating you here. I'm only educating everybody worldwide. Thank you.